What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Doug DeMuro just shat all over my car, so let's find out how bad is this transmission? Hey, I'm standing out here with my 05 Maserati Grand Sport, and this has the Cambio Corsa transmission, so the Manumatic hydraulically controlled single plate clutch transmission. And the reason I got this car is because stories about this transmission have really hurt it, and they have depreciated this car like crazy and i was actually a little worried about how this car would drive because of that so i took a little gamble i'd never driven one of these before and let me tell you what i think of it so first of all i love the way this car looks i think it's one of the really beautiful cars that maserati put out i think a lot of their cars look pretty good but this one had the classic old school look now first of all when i get in here you can hear that f1 pump firing up so anytime you open the driver's door you'll hear the kind of winding and that means it is increasing the hydraulic pressure to be able to shift so in this car there's actually a clutch to the transmission and it works just like any other manual transmission the only difference is instead of rowing your gears manually here the computer is deciding when to shift and then engaging that clutch itself now Let's drive this thing. And the first thing we'll, we'll notice here is that it has a start button, but it still has a key. And so I am gonna put that key in. And the way you fire this thing up is you basically turn it like you were starting the car and that's gonna turn on all the power. And I'm going to release the parking brake here, foot on the brake, and then I'm gonna hit that start button. And what you'll notice here is a sport button. And that sport button means that the sport mode is on. That's really important for a couple of reasons because one, it opens a valve, so this car sounds amazing. And it releases all of the horses as well as it engages the clutch faster than it does in the non-sport mode. And that's actually better for the car because the quicker that clutch engages, the less wear you have on it, the less conservative it gets on pressing that clutch into the flywheel. And so one of the nice things here is that you will actually get longer life out of your clutch in sport mode than non-sport mode. All right, to put it into reverse, we just lift up on this center shifter here, and now we are in reverse. And when I hit the gas, it is going to engage that clutch. Now, what you don't want to do actually in these cars is go really slow and kind of baby it because that actually feathers the clutch in and actually wears the clutch down a little bit more than if you weren't doing that. Now, this car sounds amazing. And one of the things that I'm gonna tell you here is that despite the fact that you have the paddles to shift it, I actually don't really like using those paddles. And there are a few reasons for that. One, because you are only increasing or decreasing the shifts, you actually don't really know which gear you're in unless you look at the dash. Unlike when you are rowing the gears yourself, you can tell if you're in third or fifth or second or fourth. So one of the things that I don't like about the paddles is that they're kind of unnecessary. And now in a sports car, they can be a little more fun than not having anything. But in my Ghibli, they came with paddles too, and you can actually have them retrofitted. But I think that's just remarkably silly. You don't need to do that. And if you want to put the middle console shifter into manual mode, you can still control it that way. Now, I keep this car in automatic mode, which means that it will shift on its own when it reaches a certain RPM. And as you drive it, you start to figure out when that is. And what the key is, is just like any other manual car, especially all manuals that you row with a shifter are just a single clutch, is that you want to feather the gas, which just means that you want to let off the gas a little bit. And that means then the shifts aren't nearly as abrupt. If I'm just standing on the gas, and then I let the car shift and I don't let off the gas, what ends up happening is that when that clutch releases, the engine spins up a little bit and you get kind of a hard shift. And people have said that it feels like a learner driver driving a stick. And I would say that's fairly accurate. Although I will say when I was a learner on a stick shift, I wasn't as good as that. And what I did there is I did let off the gas and I'm not letting off the gas right now. It's probably gonna be a little hard to see how jerky the car is. It's really not that bad. If you've ever taught someone to drive stick, you know how bad it can actually be. 
it just feels a little bit like a harder shift. And if you were driving an automatic transmission, you would start to say that that transmission's going. But in this car, that's just kind of the way it is. You get a little bit of a lurch because the engine revs up. Once that clutch engages, you get kind of this little jerkiness. Now, as you drive it, you will start to feel when those shift points are coming. And in fact, if you, in sport mode, rev it up, you can kind of force it into the next gear by letting off the gas just a smidge and then it's going to think you're slowing down so it'll select the next gear quickly and when you do that the transmission shifts are almost imperceptible and especially when you're driving with someone else especially if you are driving and you're experienced in it they can't tell that this is that manumatic single clutch transmission and i've driven around with people in the passenger seat and driven around town even in stop and go traffic down into the city of chicago and driving around there where the traffic is notoriously bad and i can tell you that it does not get jarring or bad now one of the things i have not driven is the maserati quattroporte that had this same transmission back in 2005 to 2007 range and i've heard that transmission stinks there but if it's just like this transmission it's not so much the transmission stinks i think it's a low tech transmission for sure but what the key is is you want to learn how to drive it now i admit that means that the driver has to be more engaged and more proactive in driving it whereas in just a regular automatic or even in a dual clutch manual transmission you don't have to think about it and you don't have to use your foot in concert with the engine revving but in this case you do and i think it's a fair trade-off especially for how often these cars are avoided because of these transmissions just a little bit of experience the learning curve is very short once you get used to how to feather the throttle it becomes a very enjoyable car to drive and this thing is pretty quick uh, i will also say the overrun is pretty awesome so when you're downshifting and coming to a stop it will downshift and then you get that burble on the back end and it's pretty sweet so this car definitely hauls got a speed limit here so I can't go overly fast but um, when you are putting the pedal to the metal man, this thing gets up and moves pretty quickly and it's a fun car to drive and I would say that generally driving this car and having this transmission in it if you are really interested in it don't let the transmission scare you off because I would say that especially if the car has been left in sport mode for its life, the clutch should be in pretty good shape. You can measure the clutch. Uh, the clutch replacements actually aren't that bad from Scuderia parts. I think the clutch kit for this is like eight or nine hundred bucks and then putting it in an independent shop is like, you know, seven hundred to a thousand dollars or something in that range. So it's really not that bad, uh, really not that much further off than any other clutch replacement and I think you will just enjoy this car it's pretty exclusive and it drives pretty well probably the most significant time you will feel the shifts is on the downshift so right there as I was coming to a stop as you get slower and slower and as the revs come down the shifts are a little bit abrupt and there's nothing you can really do with that actually what you can do is you can kind of hit the throttle a little bit as it's downshifting to kind of smooth that out. But usually you're not gonna to want to because you don't wanna have a little bit of a lurch forward. Now I'm gonna hit the gas here a little bit. Uh, tires broke loose there a little bit. I just kicked it out just a smidge um, and then I kind of backed off. I was not flooring it at all there. I was just giving it about 30% throttle and this thing opens up and moves, man, and it sounds great. And that's really the best thing about this is inside it's really well insulated. You can obviously hear it, but outside this thing sounds like a Ferrari. You can see heads turning when you're coming. And I think they're expecting to see something more exotic because this car is actually pretty sedate and understated. And so a lot of people think of it as something like a Jaguar XK or something like that. It's not really as apparent that it's an interesting car as like a mid-engine Ferrari or something, but it sounds like that and it sounds amazeballs. Really slowing down and downshifting is kind of where you will feel those shifts the most, but the overrun and the burble that you get and the crackle is pretty amazing as well. And it actually is a little bit showboaty. You can do that with a standard stick manual transmission as well, but it tends to, I don't know, tends to be kind of an attention getter to, to have that overrun backfiring. But man, this car is fast, it's comfortable to drive, the transmission takes a little bit of getting used to, but honestly, after your first day of driving it, after putting 
40, 50, 100 miles on it, you become a pro at it. Now, I will say that the learning curve is a little weird for people who have never driven a car like this before and you have to explain it to them. There's kind of a lot of stuff going on that you have to do as opposed to just jumping in with a manual transmission because you have to get the transmission to do all those same things. So going into reverse with the little lever, pulling both paddles back to go into neutral, pulling one paddle back to go into first, you know, are all kind of new things. But really, the exciting thing about this is that you can put it in auto and so be Besides reverse being a little weird, once you go into auto, put it in first, the car really drives like an automatic transmission. And that's where then when I loan it out to people and explain to them how to drive it, you know, I just say drive it like an auto, but because it's a manual transmission, you'll start to get the hang of how to adjust the gas pedal, how to feather the gas pedal when you're driving to make that ride just a little bit smoother. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, 400 horsepower, they got this thing right on the Grand Sport, man. I know that Top Gear, I think Hamster did a review on the Grand Sport because they were not a fan of the Cambio Corsa 4200s for a variety of reasons. And I think in those cars, you can have the transmission shifting reprogrammed to be similar to this, faster and more responsive. And I think that makes a big difference. This car was also a little lowered. It came with the Skyhook suspension. And so it just drives really really well it feels younger than a car of this age and i think man this car is a bargain it is a total steal i'm torn because part of me wants to get another car share with you get some new experiences with some other cars that i've wanted and then part of me just wants to keep you know doing the maintenance on this and keeping this car i will tell you that this car has a pretty new clutch in it that was one of the things that was replaced and so you know any car of this vintage as it gets older clutch replacements fuel filters even the hydraulic pump for the transmission needs to be replaced obviously tires suspension and bushings and things like that are going to need to be replaced or serviced and so there is a cost in running an older car that is nearly vintage but man this car still looks great it's not overly showy it's definitely puts you in the spot of a lot of maserati owners who appreciate cars but don't necessarily want the same flash and attention that you would get in other cars All right, I probably burned like four gallons of fuel just on this like five minute drive here, but it's awesome, man. This is a really a car that is super versatile. I like things that have one, two, or three purposes because you know this car kind of checks a few boxes. One, it gives you a little bit of your Gran Turismo need. It gives you a little taste of what having a sports car is like. It gives you a little bit of what a like a luxury car is like. You can take this out to a nice restaurant and valet it. You can take it out to the country to the open roads and enjoy it. You can drive it on a short road trip. It's got a decent back seat and a smallish trunk so you can still do some shopping and come back home. And it's just one of these cars where you're not getting brutalized while you're driving it and you aren't having to shift gears on a long trip or in stop and go traffic. It's really, I think, a great, great car all around. Now, if I had limitless money, I would certainly keep this car. I would put it in my big garage like all the big collectors and all the big YouTubers do, but I don't. So it's one of these things where over the next few weeks or months, or maybe after the summer, I'll have to decide what I'm going to do with this car. But if I could, man, I would just keep it. I love the color scheme. I love the look. Um, I love that I can loan this out to people who can't drive a stick, which is most everyone these days, and they can still enjoy it. And I think a lot of people are surprised about how quick it is, how quick it is. And this one looks great. I tell you what, if you're worried about getting the Cambio Corsa, the automatic shifting manual transmission cars yes there are better ones out there and the dual clutches are better and even in some of the regular standard torque converter automatics are going to be easier to drive and maybe even more comfortable but i wouldn't shy away from these cars and because of the depreciation they're a really good deal you know one of the cars and i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag here is that the original aston martin vanquishes came with a similar transmission that were really loathe but they also had an automatic button so that you could drive it like this and i think one of the things that's interesting about that is i wonder if you learn how to drive it if you learn how to feather the clutch and kind of be ginger on it can that be a car that you can 
live with, enjoy, because I think that design is absolutely timeless. It's an Ian Callum design, I believe, and I think it could be a collectible. And right now, they are seriously attainable because of the transmission. So if that's really the only reason, I really wonder if some people shouldn't be buying those up. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Cambio Corsa transmission. Peter Von Panda, out. Damn, this thing is fun.